Hi, I'm Luana Rubin from eQuilter.com and I am at the 2015 Houston International Quilt Festival. And I would like to take you on another tour, this time of the people quilts, the portrait quilts, the figurative quilts. And over the years, of course, there have been many more of these quilts at the festival. And here is one of the artists who has really captured the imagination of many of the visitors to the festival, and that's Jennifer Day. She's been known for her portrait quilts, and she recently published a book where she shares her secrets about how she gets these incredible lifelike quilts. And her secret is that she takes photos and she prints them on fabric digitally and then she thread paints over the top of them. So you can actually pick up her book and answer the question, how the heck did she do that? So we're gonna start out here in the Sakwa exhibit and then we're going to move through the exhibit and pick up some other people in portrait quilts. Deborah Boschert has created these two matching banner-shaped quilts, but I'm really drawn to, to this one over here because it's about meditation. And you can see that there is a flow of energy that is coming up through her body and out uh, into her aura, you might say. And it's done with embroidery floss hand-stitched. And you may have heard of the slow stitching movement, which really matches that meditative quality. So I like here's a quilt that she actually did the meditative process on the piece on that topic. This piece by Mary Rutzik is not a portrait per se, but then again, maybe it is. It's about the labyrinth of her life. It's about the circle of her life and all the different roles that she plays. Here's another quilt that has to do with the topic of meditation. It's by Kathy York and it's called Balance. And with this piece, we're going to transition out to the rest of the exhibit beyond Sakwa and see some more people, portrait and figurative quilts. This first prize winning quilt by Jerry Granada is Fly Me to the Moon and it kind of evokes the 60s sci-fi vibe, Barbarella and so on. And uh, at the award ceremony the other night, he was absolutely mobbed. He had on a uh, very sparkly jacket that he had made. And a lot of people said, wow, this is the first time Jerry has won a prize. He's had a lot of really great quilts at the show, so we are delighted that he received a first prize for this amazing quilt. This quilt was made by Kay and Susan as a salute to Toulouse-Lautrec, and it won the Judge's Choice Award. You may have seen this featured in the eQuilter newsletter the night of the award ceremony. It's got such depth and such presence, don't you think? Lou Keynes has become quite a quilting star over the last several years. I've been seeing his work at Birmingham at the UK uh, Festival of Quilts, and here is another one of his large self-portrait pieces. You can't miss them when you walk up to them. There's Luke. <laughs> he had a whole exhibit of his quilts in Birmingham this year. Uh, prior to that, he had individual quilts hanging, and I guess they love him so much, they invited him to come and show more of his self-portraits. So go, Luke. This incredibly detailed piece by Patsy Hecox depicts Black Elk, the uh, Lakota holy man, and you may be aware that eQuilter has worked with Mission of Love on several different projects in Pine Ridge, South Dakota with the Lakota people. So this is a piece that's very close to my heart. Here's another quilt that celebrates the Native Americans and I'm always interested to see quilts that depict indigenous peoples in the U.S. and around the world. This quilt is by Lee McComas and she is an artist who lives in Boulder, which is my hometown. It is drawn from a historic photo that she found in the Colorado History Museum. This portrait of the Dalai Lama is by Meryl Ann Butler. It's called No Place Like Om, and if you don't understand what that means, just look down below and you'll see that there's a reference to the Wizard of Oz. Here's another quilt that I love by Pauline Saltzman because it is a tribute to the civil rights movement. And what a great image this is, uh, especially for children to contemplate. Sandy Curran has created this self-portrait of her hands in triplicate, where she explores different ways of working with contrast and value and color in this basically triptych. 
Here's another type of hand portrait by Nancy Dickey. It's called Payment in Gold and it depicts a knight paying a huntsman in gold. And I'm recognizing some e-quilter fabrics in there. Susan Devani has created this beautiful piece that uh, reinvents a painting by Erte. Erte, if you know who he is, was a wonderful uh, fashion designer, illustrator, and costume designer. He designed for the Ballet Russe, and of course his uh, images are famous. They were in many magazines, and I actually had one of his posters on my wall when I went to fashion design school. This absolutely stunning quilt by Janneke de Vries Batzinga, who's from the Netherlands, depicts rich and poor. And you may have seen me uh, at the Birmingham show in the past interviewing Janneke. Uh, she's a very tall, striking woman and she wears very bright, colorful jackets that match her quilts. And she often makes quilts on the topic of African women. So if you feel like you've seen her work before, I'm sure you have. She's won many prizes. Just take a look at her abstract figures, but particularly her choice of complementary colors. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the portrait and figurative quilts at the Houston Quilt Show for 2015. You can see more of my videos at eQuilter.com.